Hey guys, welcome to Railway Empire. I have been waiting to get my hands on this, and finally the guys at uh, the nice people at Calypso have sent me a copy to uh, preview the game. Now this is developed by a company called Gaming Minds, and it's published by Calypso. And it is straight up tycoon. It's all about uh, building and developing your railroad empire and crushing the competition. Yes, there are AI competitors for you to compete against. So yeah, this is straight up Tycoon. Uh, if you like Tycoon games, I think you're going to like this. So um, let's, talk about, let's talk about the different modes. There are four modes to play in. There is um, a fairly small campaign. It's only like five, ch five chapters. This is basically a tutorial. Uh, and it's all preset conditions, and it's basically stepping you through how you play the game. So, like, chapter one is, like, laying your tracks, and then chapter two is going into the economy. We'll come, we'll come back to that. Um, then you've got scenarios. These are preset conditions. So, over in the east, there are, there are three different ones. There's one set in 1830, one set in 1850, and one set in 1890. And... The, there's one medium and two of them are hard and it's it's preset conditions so you start with a certain amount of money you start in a certain city you have a certain number of competitors that you have to compete against and you can choose your AI level and you can choose whether your rail network is going to be realistic or what they call easy what that means is if you play on easy uh, you don't have to put in signaling trains can just like go through each other Whereas if you play on realistic, then you've got to do signalling and having bypass tracks and whatever. Okay, so that is uh, the scenarios. In free mode, it's exactly the same, but you have the ability to set up the scenario yourself. So, for example, you can say, okay, I don't want to start in 1830, I want to start in 1910. And I want to start with uh, a bit less money, and I want to start in a different city, and I want to start with um, only two competitors. You can only have a maximum of three, by the way. Uh, and yeah, so you design your own scenarios. So that's free mode. And then finally, sandbox mode. Uh, now, sandbox mode, you're playing without any financial constraints. You've got unlimited money. So it's, it's exactly the same as free mode, but you've just got no competition and unlimited money. And I've got to say, if you take away the challenge of making money and beating the competitors... Um, I kind of don't really see the point. I'm sure some people will play sandbox mode, but I kind of don't see the point of that. Um, you, I think you'll see when you get in there that this is not like a, a transport fever. This is, um, it's not, I mean, it looks nice. It looks nice for what it is, but it's very cartoony. It's not photorealistic. Um, this is not about the simulation. This is about the, the management and the tycoon element. This is not, yeah. Anyway, let's, um. Let's show you. Let's jump in and play. We're going to start in chapter one. There is no one but embargo on what I can and cannot show you. So I'm just going to show you everything. So we're going to start in uh, in chapter one and um, we'll take you through the whole thing. So um, we start off in uh, in 1863, the Great Plains, and we're going to start constructing the first transcontinental line crossing um, the, the Rockies and the Great Plains. We start with two million cash. We start in the city of Omaha. Uh, we uh, we've got no competitors in this uh, in this first one, um, which is kind of a uh, it's kind of a good thing because I'll be able to explain everything to you. There is no pause button. I'll show you that when we get in. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of a this is kind of a good intro because I can take my time and explain stuff to, all all the stuff to you. Right, uh, let's jump in. The rest are just gold diggers who don't have a clue about how this business works. Now, when you're playing in the other modes, you can choose what character you want to play with. There's, um, there's the industrialist, the scientist, the, the lady, and they all have different bonuses. There's, there's loads of characters. They all have different bonuses, like bonuses to science, oh. bonuses to freight, bonuses nice. to passengers, blah, 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 blah. So, we'll just take that. Right, there is a cutscene, short cutscene, coming up. In 1863... On the banks of the Missouri River, the last chapter in the monumental undertaking of the Transcontinental Railroad began. The workers of the Union Pacific Railroad began laying their tracks westward from Omaha through the wild heart of the North American continent. Massive challenges awaited them. Away from all civilization, the country was vast, the weather ruthless, and the challenges tremendously energy sapping. But there was a masterstroke of modern engineering to be accomplished. 
to tame the wilderness and to conquer it with steel, fire, and steam. Never before had anything like this been ventured, but the time was ripe. Greetings. My name is Thomas Clark Durand. Exactly, the head of Union Pacific. We will go down on history as the ones who created the Transcontinental Railroad. And that, my friend, is your job as chief engineer. I can supervise everything here on site right now as I have to meet with some politicians in Washington. Okay. Thomas is now going to tell us how to um, move the camera Thomas, around. Familiarize yourself with the basic controls. Thank you, move Thomas. WASD. Yeah, I've got that. Now test the camera's zoom. Oh, function. we can we can zoom can in and out. Rotate the camera. Oh, Give and we can, we can we can rotate the camera. Thank you, Thomas. Right. <laughs> now we've got past all of that. He is going to give us a little task. He's going to give us our first job. Right. Switch to building construction mode and build a train station in Norfolk. And we're going to hook that up to our hometown. Here's our hometown of Omaha. Omaha. Now, um, when, it, when you're up here, you can't change the angle of the camera. But at a certain point, as you, as you zoom in, I can't do it now. Can't do it now. Can't do it now. But when I get low enough, that now I can angle the camera and I can look around the map. And I've got to say, I mean, it's not, it's not bad. It's not bad. But it is, it is very kind of cartoony. It's, um, it's not, it's not like a, a very realistic landscape. But that's the thing. that th This game is not about that. It's not about photorealism. This is about a fun tycoon game. And I think, guys, you'll, you'll find that this delivers. So, how do we build tracks? Building tracks is very, very simplistic. Uh, first of all, we've got a bunch of buildings. Uh, we've got two types, railway track buildings and city buildings. Railway track buildings are kind of what they sound like. It's um, the stations, signals, supply towers, which supply us with uh, water and sand and like all the stuff you need for your trains, uh, and warehouses. And then the city buildings are things like university, museums, attractions, and uh, industries like the meat industries, uh, the meat industry and breweries. And there's a whole part of the game which is about uh, running these industries. So it's not just about running your rail empire, but you can also buy, you know, um, farms and um, and breweries and whatever, and run those as well as part of your empire. So yeah, so you you basically you create the freight to put onto your trains, so to make your trains more profitable, right? Uh, let's get on with this. So we're going to take a small train station and pop it over here. Now, when you're putting train stations into cities, you need to be inside this green circle, which is the exact opposite of when you're doing rural stations, where you have to be outside the green circle. If you move inside, it goes red. But you have to be within uh, range of the, the this green line. If I move too far, it'll it'll go away, right? So yeah, I, I, kind of kind of a slightly weird mechanism, but there you go. Uh, so well, let's pop this in just Very there. Very good. Now the two stations need to be connected with tracks. To do this, switch to track laying mode. Right. So we go up to, to track laying mode, and track laying mode is pretty darned easy. You just you, you start at one of these connection points, right, and then you run it out to another connection point. Where are we? Now you can put in kind of waypoints in between if you want, but I'm just gonna hook this up directly. Now, once I've hooked it up like that, um, it doesn't instantly put it in. It kind of, it's now pending, and I have to click on this button up here to actually build it. And that means that I can now click and drag this however I want. And, and you can put in multiple waypoints to route the track exactly the way that you want it to go. Um, it, the track building is very, very simplistic. Uh, and very, very easy. And I've got to say, for this style of game, I think it's really good. I think they've done a really good job with the track lane. Because this game is not about track lane. This, this is about managing your empire. It's a tycoon game. It's not a simulation. So, uh, let's build now that. Now create your first train so that you can set up a rail line between your stations. Right. So, having set up the line, we're now going to put the Initially, train on it. your train only exists on paper. It's not much use to you without a locomotive. Right. So, what we do, we set up the line... So we pick the station and that station shows you what stations you've got and you can you can change them around and whatever. And then over here, save it. 
and then add a locomotive. Now, you only add the actual locomotive, uh, unlike something like Transport Fever, where you, where you add on all the wagons as well. Here, you only choose the, the locomotive, because kind of like in the real world, um, locomotives um, get swapped around uh, between uh, wagons. So you might, you might haul a load of iron uh, in, in certain wagons, in open wagons, from one place, from A to B. And then when you get to B, you'll drop that off and then maybe pick up some oil wagons, which you're going to ship back to some, somewhere else. Um, so yeah, so this simulates that and it automatically assigns cargo and passenger wagons as required. Now over here, um, this tells you the costs. This tells you the maximum speed. Uh, this tells you when it's available, although there's no tooltip, and I've no idea what this means because there's no tooltip and it's just kind of, what, I don't know, 50%, 9% what? <laughs> no idea, absolutely no idea. But uh, we click on this dollar sign to buy it, boom, and now we've bought our train. Now, if we go over here, if you mouse over the line, um, you get two options. One is to center on the train, and you can see that our train has been... Uh, if, if I'd have got there a bit quicker, you would have seen these trains actually being added one by one while it's in the station. And then once it's got all of its stuff, it, it pulls out. And I can, if I centre on the train, I don't have to keep following it. So this is our train, and we've currently got a whole load of meat that we're shipping. Now, as well as um, this centering the view, we can actually ride, like, on board the train, right along. Right. There are four camera positions, and in any of the positions, you can rotate the camera. Um, it's kind of like a, a fairly limited box, but it's not that limited. So we can turn around and look backwards. Now I can use the arrow keys. I can be on this side, which is the right side. I can be on this side, which is the left side. I can ride up, like, right up front on the cow catcher. And, and in any of those, whoops, in any of those, cameras oh let's come back to the cow catcher in any of those I can rotate the camera and see what's going on and there's even a camera pointing backwards so there you go oops yeah, let's go back oh and it's just assigned us a whole load of um, beer and I don't really yeah it does put these on like one at a time I wish I I wish I been a bit better at showing you that. Right, so our next job. Uh, every locomotive needs water, sand and lubricant on its journey. You have to place a supply tower along the route. So if we go up here to building construction and grab a supply tower and it's telling us where, it shows us where it wants us to put it. And we just plop that in there. Boom, done. And this will stop and get whatever supplies it needs. Awesome source. Right, next job down here build a rural train station uh, let me close that down here we go construct a, construct a rural train station in the marked location with the corn farm within its radius okay so this is what i was telling you about the um the station needs to be like close enough to it but not inside the, the circle this time a little bit weird and uh, the way you rotate the stations is you hold like you hold down it tells you down there you hold the shift key down and then use the mouse wheel which is going to be interesting for people who don't have a scroll wheel on their mouse which is which not everybody does and like at, like if you're playing on a laptop yeah I, I think that's going to be kind of interesting for some people right so now we want to connect them together so let's grab a bit of track connect that and get up here, connect to there. We don't want to do anything anything funny with it, so just accept it. Now establish a new rail line. Your second rail line should run via Omaha to Norfolk. So we want to go from the farm to Omaha and then on to Norfolk. So that the people of Norfolk can also enjoy fresh corn. How considerate. Right, so, so we'll get a new line which runs from Evans Farm. Two Omaha, boom. No, oh, I didn't pick up. I didn't pick up Evans Farm. Apparently, give me, get out of the way. Thank you. So we'll start at Evans Farm, then Omaha, and we'll end up at boom Norfolk. Thank you very much. Okay, um, accept that line, and then we'll add a locomotive, and we'll just stick another Philadelphia on. Boom, and there we go. And that's it. Right, let's go and look at that train. 
And you, ah, here we go. Now you can see the, the wagons being put on one at a time. Boom, boom, boom. Right, now this thing says waiting for Omaha to Norfolk. Because, obviously, we've put this train on the same line, on the same track as the other locomotive, which is running back and forwards between Omaha and Norfolk. So now, Thomas is going to give us um, a job to do so that both trains can run on this track. First, create a side track. It needs to be uh, at least long enough for a fully loaded train. So, so yes, here's the, here's the Norfolk Omaha train. Um, and I'll point out, by the way, well, we've got a, what the hell? We've got a great big, great big mushroom cloud <laughs> coming over. Um, if you, I, I like this. If you, if you mouse over a, a track, it tells you how busy that train is, like how, 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 mu how much that track is used. And you can see, like having one train on here is like four percent utilization. So it tells you kind of how many trains you could have running on there. And the other thing is, if if I click on it, it'll show you the um, the individual. Um, lines that are running on there and the, and the individual trains that are running on there as well so yeah the it's kind of I, I kind of like it in terms of the way it presents the information at least so far although I think for some people they will find this UI a little bit simplistic I, I I've heard I've heard people say it's kind of sort of reminiscent of a of a mobile game and I kind of understand what they mean but to be honest, as long as the UI does its job, then I'm not really too worried. Um, by the way, there is no pause. Like I said, you've got two game speeds. That's it. Just normal and fast, and that's it. And you can't pause the game. But the game does pause when you like go to the menu or whatever. So, um, yeah. Right, so what do we want to do? We want to create a side track over here. So let's get track construction. And the first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll just plonk a bit of track alongside like that from there to there right and then I'll hook this up to there and then I'll go to the other end and whoops I think I need to put that in and then yeah and then I can put this end in like that okay so I've created my side track get out of there are you gonna give me the next thing that I need to do Come on. I've got to say, Thomas does kind of take his time sometimes. I don't know, I'm not quite sure what triggers the next event sometimes. Yeah. Cut to the next train. No. No. It needs to be at least long enough for a little fully loaded train. Yeah, well, it is. Ah, here we go. There's a little, a little animation that shows you how to do it. Right, well, I've done that. Come on. Come on. Give me the next thing. <laughs> It doesn't want to. Come on, give me the next job. It doesn't want to. I've built the rural station. Done that. Done that. Like seriously, what, what are you upset? Oh, I didn't. I didn't connect that. I didn't build that bit. That's why. That's why he's not happy. There you go. See, it's my fault. It's always my fault. Right. Thank you, Thomas. Right now, give me the next job, which is going to be to put some signalling in, I believe. You're gonna, you're gonna tell me to. But here we go. Now open construction mode and set up a signal. Okay, this is the way that you set signals up, and it's kind of a bit different from how you might think that you would do it. So you come down here to signals. Um, now, hang on. Is there a, is there an example here? Um, here we go. So, the way you do it is you put a signal before um, a switch. Okay. And you put in a stop sign uh, as well as a, it, there's, there's directional signals and then there are stop directional signals. So what you have to do is put one in um, before a switch in the direction that it's supposed to be traveling like that. Yeah, which is kind of not, not necessarily how I would always do it, but... Um, but it works, and that's all that's, all that's important. So we're going to do it. So what do I want? I want uh, building construction. I want signals. And then down here, before this switch, we put in a signal. And then if I, whoops. And then if I click on it, um, I need to shift click on it to change it to a stop directional signal. But what, so what that means is that trains can't go up this way 
and trains can come this way. And then we need to do the same at the other end. So we put that in there and then shift click on it to make it a stop signal. And now with a bit of luck, Thomas should be happy and give us the next thing that we need to do. <laughs> Maybe in your own time, Thomas, whatever you like, it's all done. It's all finished. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't want to give us anything more. Um, have you, uh, are you setting up the, t are, you, are you switching over to the tasks? No, we've still got to fill. Oh, here we go. Construct a maintenance building at your station in Omaha now. Right, so if we go over to Omaha, if we click on the station, we get um, we get a couple of options. One is to expand the station so we can add additional tracks to it. And then this one is to construct a maintenance building. It costs 80,000. And that will help to keep the, the trains uh, running so that they don't break down so often. Right, we've been lollygagging for long enough. I need to return to Washington for further miserable negotiations, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I've written a task list for you. Take a look at it and complete the tasks within the given time period. Right, so I've got to kind of crack on a little bit because here, here are our tasks. We've got to connect Omaha and North Platte. And we've got to do that in 1960, uh, 1863. Uh, then we've got to connect Omaha and Cheyenne. And then by 1866, we've got to do like deliver 16 loads of cattle to Denver, 16 loads of meat to Cheyenne. So we need to get on with this. So let's get Omaha and North Platte connected. So where are we? Um, here's Omaha over here. North Platte is over here. So we just need to extend this line down here. So let's do that. So what do I want? I want track. Uh, oh, I put a station in first, you bonehead. Here we go. Here we go. So train station. Um, I'm gonna put. Um, I'm gonna put a regular one. North Platte. Uh, boom, boom, boom. I'm not. I'm not sure we need anything. I'm gonna put a small one in because I can always expand it later. So um, we're gonna be going on to Cheyenne after that. So make sure it's pointing in kind of sort of the right direction there we go right now we'll go to uh, track lane connect that to Norfolk boom in you go am I happy with that yeah pretty much boom oh and we get a bonus because we've completed that task hooray uh, but we now we've connected it but we haven't got any trains running on it now I've got a choice I can either like modify the line so that we've got trains uh, the, the train that's running from uh, Omaha to Norfolk I could extend that to come down to uh, to North Platte or I could put a, a just a, a new train on there and I think that's probably what I'll do um, but what I could do I suppose what I could do let's do let's put um, Omaha and Cheyenne in yeah let's put Omaha and Cheyenne maybe we'll have a train that runs all the way down yeah why not why not? So Cheyenne. Now I'm pretty sure I'm going to need uh, a much bigger train station in Cheyenne. Um, yeah. So let's. Uh, I'm going to go with a large train station straight away, and I'm going to flip it around to point straight down there because I know that I'm going to be going across here um, to where is it? Mm. Oh, Rock Springs, that's where we're actually going to be headed. So I just want to make sure that we're pointing kind of, kind of sort of roughly in that direction. That'll do. That'll do. So let's switch to track. I'm going to take the northmost track there and then go back up to, here we go, North Platte. And hook up to there. Boom. Build it. Oh, bonus received, another 200,000, lovely. And we've completed that task, so we've done that. Right, now we have to deliver 16 loads of cattle to Denver, and then we have to del deliver 16 loads of meat to Cheyenne. Okay, so how do we get cattle to Denver, and then how do we get meat to Cheyenne? Well, getting the cattle... Uh, there's a cattle ranch there, so we could ship cattle from there to Denver, and then in Denver there is there's a meat a meat business a meat industry, right, which will uh, which will create the meat for us, and then we'll ship that up to 
Shall I? Yeah. So, what do we want? We want a couple of uh, couple of train stations, don't we? So let's go to building construction. Small train station. So let's see. If I flip this around, kind of, and let's do it that way. So let's put the train station there. And we'll put another train station. Now, where's the cows? There's the cows. Now, we want to flip you around, probably, like that kind of thing. Boom. All right. And then we'll get a bit of track. Hook it up. Hook it up. As you can see, the, the track building is really simplistic. Like, if if you're not, like, massively into, like, the whole track building thing, then it's really easy. You just throw them in. No big deal. And then you can actually worry about kind of running the business rather than worrying about like all the minutiae of uh, how you lay your tracks. So I think we'll have this one coming into... Um, yeah, I, I can't see us needing any tracks below this. So we'll, we'll put that one into that platform. Yeah, build that. Okay, so now what we need are... So we will put a train from Kelly Ranch to Denver. Um, now, you know, I could, I suppose I could go straight, I could go to Denver, stop at Denver, and then go straight on to Cheyenne. And then go all the way back. Hmm. No, you know, I'm going to do it as two separate lines, I think. I'm going to do it as two separate lines. We'll add a locomotive. We'll just put in a Philadelphia firm. And then get out of there. We'll put in another line. Uh, set up the line. That's going to go from Denver to Cheyenne. Accept it. Add a locomotive. We'll put in a Philadelphia firm. Okay, now we have got to deliver, let's see, um, 16 loads of cattle. Good Lord. That's quite a lot. And we've got to, when have we got to do that by? We've got to do that by 1866. So let's crank this up to double speed. And where's this? Uh, let's see. Let's follow this train. So we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight cows in there, right? That's being delivered. Now, does that count as eight loads? Yes, it does. So we've only got to go there and back twice. So we'll just let that run. And then that, that gets turned into meat. And then this train is going to deliver that. Should we do a bit of a ride along? Oh, uh, the one thing I didn't... Oh, the one thing I didn't mention is you can blow the, the whistle. <laughs> if you like that kind of thing, which of course I do. Alrighty, so we've just delivered uh, and that, that load of meat to Cheyenne. So now, all we've got to do is um, deliver another load. We've already got 99,000 people connected to our rail network. So the next job, um, bum, 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 reach population of 30,000 in Cheyenne. Right, well we're already at 17,000 and it looks like we're growing, so that's good. Connect Omaha and Rock Springs will be the next one. So... Well, let's, let's do that, shall we? Where's, uh, where's Rock Springs? Here's Rock Springs. So I think we'll grab a... Oh, we only need a small station. Um, let's just put you in like that. That'll be fine, I think. And then we'll grab some track. Now, when you, I think when you're playing in the more advanced um, scenarios... And like you're playing in hard mode and you've got competition uh, putting these tracks in you're gonna have to pay like real close attention because um, they get pretty damned expensive I'm gonna put this onto one of the middle ones um, that one will do that's fine yep let's pay oops now why can't I put that in uh, oh because it's wow it's way too way too expensive All right so let's move you Let's move you out a bit. So if we come out, like, to say there. See, I've, it's already dropped it down from, like, 1.9 million to, like, 300,000. I, I must admit, I wasn't expecting that to be anywhere near that expensive. 
So let's run you out like through there. And maybe um, let's, let's run it more like that. And then have you running through there. Yeah. And that's only going to cost us 136,000. So yeah, you can see how you kind of do have to pay attention to this. And when it's um, when it's in the in the tougher scenarios, oh, you, I think you're going to be really fine tuning these to try and get like every penny you can out of them. So, boom, boom, boom. boom. Um, I need to go and look at um, Cheyenne and look at the, the demands. Uh, but let's put that in. Boom. And that's completed that task. Nice. So we need to go and look at Cheyenne. So if we go and click on Cheyenne, it brings us information about the city. And if we click on this button up here, it'll show us the city's demand for goods. Right, this is the, the current stock. So this is what the city has. This is their weekly demand. And then this is their weekly production. And the only thing that they're actually producing is beer. And then this is the demand in all cities. And this is production in all businesses. So, uh, for example, they have like nine meat. But they have a demand, a weekly demand for three. Uh, well, point, sorry, point three. So, yeah, they've actually got like quite a lot. I mean, that'll last them quite a lot, quite a long time. But So, this is how you kind of decide, like, what am I going to ship in to this city? So, this one, a good example would be, well, like, corn would be a good thing. Because they haven't got any in stock. They've got a demand of point three uh, per week. So that would be a good thing to ship in there. Do you know that many people call a vast stretch of land between the Mississippi and California the Great American Desert? <laughs> Those fools. Once my railroad has opened everything up, the value of these lands will go through the roof. Thank you for that, Thomas. Right, um, you get these newspapers that pop up every so often as you kind of pass milestones. So, uh, no stopping the Union Pacific Railroad over 1.1... Oh, what is that? 11? If it's that like one, is that a thousand one hundred miles of track? I guess. I guess I don't know. It's like one point one point. It can't be one point one million. No, I, I have no idea. Anyway, um, some of these stories are actually kind of funny. Look at this. Man bear pig is real. <laughs> Al Gore, Al G. Or claims to have repeatedly seen a monster that looks like a man bear pig or bear man pig or something. Uh, so South Park fans will love that. I kind of love that. So these, these stories are actually kind of funny. I do like those. Right, let's get rid of that. Oh, we've got another one. Union Pacific Railway. New connections. Eight stations currently connected. So there's another milestone that we've passed. Connect Cheyenne to a timber business and a wheat farm. And establish a new rail line that connects them both to Cheyenne. And I think we completed another task. What did we complete? Uh, so we've done the cattle. We're still waiting for another load of meat. Uh, this has now grown. Um, sorry. we've Now that we connected, um, what was it? Rock Springs. Uh, we've now reached our 120,000 marker. Yeah, we've, com um, we've completed that. So all we've got to do is grow Cheyenne. And the way that you grow a city is um, uh, by connecting uh, additional um, products. Basically, every 5,000 people of growth, they'll demand another product. So if we can supply them with, what was it, timber and wheat? Ah, okay, we've got timber and wheat. It wants us to put a station in here now. If we go to building construction and I grab a small train station, um, you can see that it's not going to be within range, right? It needs to be kind of there, and this one there. So do I do I put in two stations, right, and two tracks and whatever? Well, I could do that, or the bigger train stations have a larger area. So this one. A larger catchment area. So that one is only going to there. Right? If I get a train station, this one will come out to there. But it's not quite going to get both of them. But if I get a large train station, it'll hook both of them up. Um, okay, it costs 200000 but yeah. So it's not the cheapest. So if you, if you were like, I don't know, in the early stages of one of the like tough scenarios or whatever, and you really wanted both of them, you'd probably throw in two small train stations. But um, yeah, you could just do it with one if you've got the money. So let's, uh, where am I going? I'm going to Cheyenne, so we'll put it in 
just straight there. Cook chopping. Let's hook the track up. Yeah, it doesn't matter which one really. Now, uh, the question is, ah, see, I didn't think I was going to be coming from that side. Um, so this is, a, uh, let me show you how you change the tracks. So this bit of track here, I want to replace. If I bring up my demolish tool, um, there are two things you can do. You can either remove a section of track, or you can use, hold down the shift key and you can define a section of track. So I'm going to I'm going to hold down the shift key. Say, uh, let's click there. So I'm defining this as my bit of track. I'll remove that. Then I'll hook this up to now. Which is the free one? This is the free one. There, right? Put that in. Boom. So I've rerouted that, and then now. I should have kept that. And then now I can go over here, pick, it doesn't matter which one of these, and hook it straight into that platform there. Boom. Yep, that's the right one. Bingo. And then we'll grab a train. We'll set up the railway line, uh, the railway route, which is from there to Cook Chopping. Boom. Add a locomotive, Philadelphia, bye. And off we go. Now, I will mention, because I, I don't know whether it tells you in, in this one, I don't think it does. Um, we'll just have a quick look up here. So up here you've got your, you've got your, your options. Uh, and if we actually look at the options, you've got gameplay options, you can switch all this stuff. So if, if you don't want to see the newspapers, you can turn them off. Um, then you've got your controls, and now graphics. I, now I've got to show you this. This, has got, this is really silly, right? Th there's no drop down for this. It's only like scrolling left and right there are loads of graphic options right and you've got to scroll through all of these to try and find the one that you want rather than just a drop down menu and and select it I, that's just i mean it's kind of silly having to scroll through a whole big list like that but like you're only going to do it once so like who cares right um so you got the um, the options and then uh, this is tips and tricks. And for example, let's say you, you were unclear about the signals and you wanted a bit more a bit more info. If you go to signals and it shows you, and it's got these not really nice little pictures. I, I do like this, showing you exactly how the signals work and how you should set them up. Um, there's the types of signals. Here's, here's how you do side tracks. So it's showing you exactly how you do side tracks. So you put the, the stop the stop directional sign in before the switch uh, on the two ends. And it also shows, shows you if you want to do uh, multiple trains, how you do that up, how you set that up. So yeah, this is actually very good. And it shows you like the, the economy and the transport industry and banking and all that kind of stuff. So that's tips and tricks. This is the tasks, which we've already looked at. This is the company info. So over here, this tells you everything about the company. So here's our company's value. Uh, how many bridges and tracks and uh, locomotives and rail lines and all that kind of stuff. Uh, here's the data on those. All kinds of interesting stuff. And then if we if we go through here, um, this will give us a, a quarterly report. And then we get uh, information on our competitors. And then banking. Now here, we've got a whole stock market. So you can play the stock market if, that, if that's your thing. If you want to buy and sell shares, you can buy and sell shares in your competitors. Uh, you can even buy your competitors out completely if you want to. And then if you need a loan, this is where you take out a loan. So you issue a bond and it, off, it offers you different interest rates and different amounts that you can select. So there you go, that's that. And then you've got research. Now, there are, I think about eight, uh, sorry, about 300 technologies to research. And yeah, it ranges from like, in the era that we're in at the moment. So we're in, we, we started in 1863. So this is the era that we're in at the moment. And our next upgraded train would be the, the number 51 Dragon. Um, that's the Philadelphia that we've already got. The next one would be the, uh, uh, the Renz, uh, Renz, the what? The Renz Seller? I don't know, whatever, however the hell you pronounce that. But there's all kinds of other stuff, like, um, so, the, the Caboose. We can unlock the Caboose. And all of these things will give you extra bonuses. So, for example, um, using the Caboose will increase bonuses for all employees by 
So it makes all your employees 20% better. Uh, this one is Express Trains. Increases the number of passengers in every city where your company has a station by 10%. Kind of cool. So, yeah, there's loads of that. And if we, if we go back, right, um, to a previous era, you can see that there's, there's loads of stuff in here. And if we go, go back far enough, we'll get back to the earliest trains and things. Oh, no, this is trains and nation, right? That's companies and construction. Um, if I, uh, yeah, if I use the scroll wheel. So here is the very earliest locomotive, the grasshopper. So this is where it starts. So you can see, if I, if I scroll all the way through this, there's loads and loads and loads and loads of stuff to research. Yeah, I mean, that's a hell of a research tree. And you've got a research tree, like I said, for the trains and locomotives, and you've got another one for the company and construction. So, yeah, there's f absolutely loads of it. Um, foreign workers, yeah, division of labor, collaborations, loads of stuff. We'll get to that. We'll get to all of that. You'll see it eventually. Right, let's get out of there. Find the advances that can be achieved in the current era. Advances from previous eras are usually already active, but what the future holds, we do not know. Thank you very much, Thomas. And then up here, we've got the... Um... For each advancement, you require innovation points, which you get automatically each week. Unlock an innovation of your choice now. How about a new locomotive? Okay, so I haven't showed you the research. He now wants us to actually do a research, uh, get, get a research. So yeah, each month you get innovation points and then you can spend them in here. They also... Um, uh, th there are also auctions when you're up against competitors. Um, some of these, um, some of these research advancements will be auctioned, and you bid against your competitors to see who gets it. So um, yeah, we'll just take—I don't know—we'll just grab this one. That's fine. The, the 51 Dragon. There we go. Boom. Right. I wanted to show you the engine shed because here is where you can see all the engines and which ones are, uh, are researched and which ones are not. So we've got the Philadelphia. We should have the next one, which should be the Dragon. There you go. There's the Dragon, and then. All the others will still be locked. And the the biggest, baddest one, oh, we can't see it, is the, no, we can't see it. My opponents say I'm lining my own pockets. These are, of course, hideous lies. And look at it this way. With the profits I'm making, I can invest much more. Jobs, jobs, jobs. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. He chips in with this stuff occasionally. So let's see, what have we got to do? Um, Cheyenne, we need to grow Cheyenne a little bit more, which will happen. Once, uh, once we ship some more of this stuff in. So Cheyenne is growing. Uh, what else do we need to do? Transport 100 passengers from Cheyenne to Rock Springs without stopping. Well, that shouldn't be too much of a problem, should it? All we need to do is um, set up a rail line from, whoops, from Cheyenne to Rock Springs. Where are you, Rock Springs? Here we go. Boom. Uh, yeah, accept that. Add a locomotive. We'll, st we'll stick with the Philadelphia. We'll stay consistent. Boom, pop that in. And that's it. And I think now, I think it's just a matter of time. So let's speed it up because we just um, we just need Cheyenne to grow a little bit more. Let's see, what are we up to? 27. Yeah, that's growing pretty quickly. 20, almost 28, 28,000. a lot of competitors. But if one person really gets on my nerves, then it's that Beatrix von Pomp. What, you haven't encountered her yet? Be glad. She takes everyone to the cleaners. Uh, yeah, thank you for that, Thomas. Yeah, it's, uh, Beatrix von Pomp is, uh, is one of the characters that you can, you can play as. I, I forget what her bonus is. Um, I don't know. So, here's, um, here's our train running between Cheyenne and Rock Springs. Let's see. Uh, has it delivered? It should have delivered some. Yeah, it's already delivered a third of the passengers. Oh, we, oh there we go. We've just hit 30,000. So the only thing we've got to do is have two more runs out to, uh, out to uh, Rock Springs, and we're done. Enormous. Oh. The Far East is no longer so far away anymore, and the people are slowly realizing that trade helps create prospering cities. We still and... have a long way to go, but the Transcontinental <laughs> Railroad is coming. Have you finished now? Thank you. And there we go. We're, we're done. This chapter was a success. You have completed all the compulsory tasks in this chapter. Close this dialogue box to view our final. Do you want to see our final rating? I think we've got another cutscene to go through before we get our final rating. In spite of all the challenges, 
the Union Pacific Railroad managed to cross the endless expanses of the Great Plains and conquer the merciless slopes of the Rocky Mountains. The Central Pacific Railroad approached from the west, but the winter of 1868 brought all work to a standstill. The two lines lay just a few hundred miles across from each other in the middle of nowhere in the mountains. The dream of the first transcontinental railroad seemed to be within touching distance, but was buried by house-high masses of snow and blown away by icy snowstorms, a dream that had begun almost four decades before. And we got the rating of Conductor. So we fulfilled all of our tasks. We did the optional tasks. Blah, 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 blah. There you go. So that is chapter one completed. We'll leave it there. Um, I can't wait to see what you think about this game. So leave me a comment. Um, it's the first episode of the new series. So if you want to see more videos on the game, hit the old like button. And uh, yeah, I've got to say, I'm looking forward to the next episode. I will catch you for that. Hope you enjoyed this one. Peace out.